you have Gani every day, it's another ritual and another opportunity. So like always, the road is open. All we have to do is do what it takes and the path is gonna open up for itself. That energy is gonna attract our destination. And once we look up and do what we supposed to, ain't no amount of guns in this world that can hold us down. When I speak with African Americans and I tell them that racism, the word racism has no power, I get funny looks. I feel as that as African Americans, them the only people I can speak on, that we're stuck in the 60s, that we're stuck in the 20s, and we're using that same dogma, that same approach to counter the system that those use behind us. And, and it's time for us to advance, and it's time for us to create our, create our own path, because as we know, we stand on our ancestors shoulders so it's not really what they said because what they said back then was important but it's by building on what they said and applying it today so when i tell our brothers you know racism has no power the word racism has no power today. If you're in any business environment and if you call someone racism or racist, they're gonna look at you like, okay, prove it. And you gonna be the one have to prove yourself or that can get in trouble. Now, if you call someone anti-Semitic, that person automatically have to prove themselves or they're going to get kicked out the door. So that's a power in the word. If you call someone homophobic, it's going to be the same reaction. So the reason why I say the word racism has no power because it just don't apply to people of African descent. You know? It just don't apply to us. It can apply to anyone, anything, any person, any being. We know that racism, I guess, that's a discrimination of race. And race, as far as the scientific, the scientific definition, is agree that what well, it's the same people with everyone is of the same race but have different discernible traits. Something like that, you know. But the thing about it is, it's all about ethnicity. So when I say that it's about ethnicity, I mean that we have to use the word that applies to us. And racism has no power in the Afrophobic world. In the Afrophobic world. Catch it when I say Afrophobic because when we talk about Afrophobia, we talking about the fear and aversion of Africa. I know I got a lot of brothers, man. When the word homophobia came out, which was which came out maybe I don't know. As far as I know, I think when I had did my research, I think it came out more than like forty years ago. But it just started getting popular, and a lot of brothers was like, "How am I homophobic? I'm not afraid of." Homosexuals. So a lot of times we get caught up in the words, but not fully understanding the words and getting caught up in a single definition, you know, which is really has no relevance to what's going on because phobia is a fear and aversion. And aversion is a dislike, it's a calculated dislike. So when I speak about Afrophobia, that means that that word applies to people of African descent. 
A lot of times we get so caught up, man, we make our own words, we create our own definitions that give us that what we call that subliminal power that we feel like that we have. You know, a lot of times we get caught up. I see the memes where, you know, African people can't be racism because we don't have the power to implement racist institution. But that's garbage because then now you're trying to label yourself as a victim and there's no power in victimhood. And, and it's so it's like, so now you're going to subconsciously put this inside of you and inside your kids and bad this inside your children's sight so they feel like they would never have any power. But that's humble. Could you imagine you telling that to someone that is a perpetrator, that is perpetrating crimes on you? Oh, I can't be racist because I don't have no power. What? You don't have no power? Well, they're going to give you a paddle. Go in the room, sit down there. Go put your head in the corner. So, first of all, we have to start speaking with authority. That's number one. You know, but what's essential is we have to be able to articulate what's going on relative to Africa. That's how we succeed as a people. And that's how we separate all the garbage and all the propaganda that come at us. It, it's simple. You know, a lot of times they throw so much Afrophobic filth at our way, but we don't see where is it coming from. We say, oh, you hate us because our skin color. Fuck that. You hate us because we from Africa. And that should be the main concern. Because this is about ethnicity. They want our land and they want who we are. And so eventually, once we separate ourselves from who we are and the continent where we from, guess what? All the resources are theirs. Oh, you don't have no right to these. And guess what? Subconsciously, so we'll feel like we don't have no right to them. Because that's how it works. If you look around anywhere, that's how it works. So we have to attach ourselves to our roots. You know, they were quick to throw us in a colorized box. So, you know, you black. To what that mean? You black. You a second class citizen. You're, you're not nowhere you don't have nowhere and 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 before i even much push that agenda it's like sometimes that we even came to the point now where we like um man the whole earth is ours we come from everywhere we everything and that's true but let me put you in to to to, 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 to a little secret the earth is our homeland but the earth is everybody's homeland. It's not just ours, but Mother Africa is our motherland. So it's a separation. We can never forsake our motherland. If you don't have your two foot on the ground on any foundation, you can never stand. And you're going to be blowed over, pushed over, blow side to side. You know, so that's why it comes... We have to have that mindset, that African mindset of who we are as a people. If not, you're going to just be some black person. Where you from? Oh, that was a blackie over there. You know, you can go anywhere. Oh, that's a blackie over there. That's just a blackie. Nah, man, we African people. You know, like I always say, you go to China, you... you you see a China, you see a Chinese man in Jamaica. Guess what they call him? Chino, China man. He don't even have to be born in, in in Chinese. He don't even have to be freaking Chinese. Just have a little Chinese feature. He from China. If they still calling him Yellow Man, hell far nah. If you go to Jamaica anywhere, you see anybody of Indian descent, and what you gonna be like? Oh, he from India. 
How the freak you know he's from India? But he from India. They calling him by color now. Nah. So first thing, we have to get out that colorized box. You know, and we have to have that attachment to our roots. So that's why when the aggression or when the filth and the propaganda come at us, we have to call it out for what it is. That is Afrophobic. It's Afrophobia. And it's that simple. Let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you how big and how serious it's becoming. You can go to South Africa right now. Or we can go in, 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 in a couple of English-speaking countries in Africa, specifically in the South. And they will tell you that, oh, that's a black African. Why do you have to put black in front of African? All Africans are the same. All Africans are people of melanin. We know, okay, for all the intellects, we know human, is, uh, 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 human existence started three million years ago in Eastern Africa. And all man came out of Eastern Africa. But if you see someone looking like me, and if you see someone presumably looking like you, man, we the walking image of Africa. Everybody ain't gonna be the walking image of Africa. Just like if you see someone with some Chinese features, that's the walking image of China. You know these people. Okay, yeah, these people from China. So we still in the walking image of those ancient ancestral people. So why, if you go into a country in Africa, you identify somebody as a black African? like a European can ever resemble an African. Why do we have to say, oh, that's a white African? Nah, see, that's the play. The play is they want to separate you from your source of power. They want to separate us from our knowledge. So that's why we run around here playing these racist games. We run around here stuck in this colorized box and we just sounding like victims. It's that simple. It, 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 and, it, and there's no other way that we can call it if we be really honest with ourselves. Because I tell you, for us to be sitting around here colorizing ourselves and detaching ourselves from our roots and then at the same time catching offense when someone tell you that you are African, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Like I say, we know what happened in the 1960s when the movement came, the black power movement, you know, that black is beautiful movement came along. These people got tired of being called colored. They got tired of being called Negro. So guess what? They start calling themselves, nah, we black. We black and we beautiful because we going to diametrically set ourselves opposed to you Europeans who call yourself white because our philosophy is different, our understanding different, and, and we not with this shit. We black. So we know, and that was needed at the moment. But check it, in 1920, during the Marcus Garvey movement, they were still calling themselves Negro. So in time, we have to change. We cannot be on that same format. So it is vital that we advance with the times. If we continue to stay stuck in the past and you see everybody else expanding mentally. They're not doing the same thing that they used to do. You know, back then, as people of African descent, you had, you know, they couldn't talk much. They couldn't say things, as we can say now, 
without being prosecuted. So that gave them a lot of power to be able to just express their feelings and express their emotions. And that was a victory for them. But we have to keep advancing. And, and, and when it comes to the point where we want to just be stuck in a colorized box, you can't tell me we're advancing. We bigger than just a color. So we have to frame our point of references. We have to frame our arguments on who we are as a people and who we are as an ethnic group and where we come from. Because if we frame it on anything else, it's like it's standing on an empty eggshell. It, it's weak. It's going to cry. You're going to be looked at as a victim. You're going to be looked at as a as a, someone who is immature. And, you know, and I and I, and I go on these pages sometimes, these YouTube, and I hear people that say, man, listen, yeah, we black, and they trying to change us from being black. I ask you, what does black mean? How many definitions does black have? And being that we using a language that is not ours, that should be even more relative or uh, you can relate even more saying that this word does not belong to us and this word do not describe us because this word has negative connotations of course we are a melanin people of course we are a different we have different uh character features characteristic features as well as uh, features that, you know, human features from Europeans, from Chinese. We are our own people. But why? Because we are from Africa. So when I tell these people, man, racism, that word doesn't apply to you. It, they look confused and they don't understand. And, and, and it's not about us. It's not about us being stuck on the color it, that colorist image that they gave us that made us feel like we're what's less than. You have little kids running around. We teaching them black is beautiful. Oh yeah, I teach them they black because they know black. But then at the same time, on the opposite shoulder, they making jokes like, Oh, you so black jokes. Come on. Like, really? You know, so that's when, you know, it's bad enough that we speak in a foreign tongue. But what matters most is we have to have that connection to Africa. Could you just imagine that outside of the colorist perception, if we were to start describing what's going on, the aggression, the uh, the violations as being Afrophobic. You know, what would their impression be? You know, I let the Europeans know quick. Um, colorism is legal racism and it promote a caste system. Time when a European come around me talking about, oh, oh yeah, it was a black guy over there. Oh yeah, it was a, a white guy that did this. I tell him quick, now I don't deal with colorism. Colorism is legal racism and it promote a caste system because that's what it does. So we have to have it tied to our roots. We have to be tied back to Africa. You know, you don't have to never been to Africa to be African. Because African is within us. We the walking image of Africa. So it's important. It is so super necessary and vital that we push this narrative and get off 
this racist. Oh, you prejudiced. Oh, you a bigot. You sound like a victim. You know, and we have to bring power to our words. We have to hit them where it counts. The, the first thing anyone of Jewish descent have to say is, oh, it's anti-Semitic. You can just say anything about Israel. You can say anything about the Zionists. You can say anything. Oh, you anti-Semitic. And guess what happened? Man, you can hear the boots hit the ground. Soldiers marching. They, they're going for somebody's head. The same way with homophobia. What? Oh, you homophobic. What? Sometimes not. You say homophobic. Now does someone say homophobic? And guess what happened? And they call you homophobic. They've been saying it so much and they have a bad connotation attack. You feel some type of way. And the first thing, like I was saying, we do. Oh, I'm not scared of. I'm not. I'm not scared of homosexuals. But phobia does not mean just scared. If phobia means just being fear of, then why would they need to worry for it? You understand? It means an aversion. It means extreme dislike. You want to separate yourself from. And that's what we see. That's what going on when it's dealing with us as African people all over the globe. I don't care if you in Rio. I don't care if you in Cuba. I don't care if you're Puerto Rico. I don't care if you're in Tampa, Florida. If they're discriminating, uh, if they're persecuting, uh, if they're showing ill will towards anyone of African descent, that's Afrophobia. And they're being Afrophobic. And it's the catch. And I guarantee you, if this was brought to the table, they wouldn't know how to respond. So it's up to us to change the dialogue. It's up to us to change the language to make them to change the language. It's up to us to get in their face when we talk to them and say, nah, mm-mm. It's an Afrophobic generation. You know, it's an Afrophobic system that's going on against all people of African descent. Because if we're going to stick ourselves in that colorized box, we don't have nothing to attach to but a colorized box. And we got to remember, it's a lot of different colors in that colorized box. But we the only one that is using it. So we have to attach ourselves to our source. We have to attach ourselves to our mother. At the time when we got to now, the time when our ancestors did the necessary work that they had to do, believe me, they fought hard and they used all the resources they had. But guess what? Now we have their resources to build on. And now we have the ability to obtain more resources. Because I tell you this, when it comes to having that African philosophy, and when it comes to understanding that ancient schematic system, that pre-dynastic system, they didn't have that knowledge. When it comes to having that African spiritual system, Marcus Garvey, he didn't have that knowledge. Huey P. Newton, they didn't have that knowledge. But they had that dog and they wanted to fight. So it's up to us. We have the knowledge to be able to articulate exactly the forces that are coming against us and what they're trying to do. So what the, and everybody know what they're trying to do. We always say it's always just divide and conquer. But we don't understand the basic elements behind divide and conquer. To put you in that colorized box is a tool, a weapon to divide and conquer. To detach you from the motherland, from who you are, is divide and conquer. Now, when you think of black, you just think of a wandering people. 
because half of the people that say they black don't have no connections to Africa, don't want to be from Africa. And if you tell them they're from Africa, they're going to go bolting out the door, say, oh, no, hell no, nah, you're not talking to me. So, listen, racism, the word itself has no power. That's eliminate the meme that's saying that we can't be racist because we don't have the power to institute racist systems because that just sound like a whole bunch of victim hoopla. That sound like a whole bunch of people who are trying to make excuses. Because we African people and we don't been through it all. And we are ancient people. And they know that. So that's why they say when they went to Africa, besides them calling you ancient, they're going to call you primitive. That's why the first thing they try to do, being that you were from Africa, was trying to take Kemet out of Africa. Like I say, they come up with this sub-Sahara line, like sub-Sahara line, like, um, like what the hell is that? You just made, you, you just sub-Sahara, like you just made this up? So, it's important. They try to make Egypt public enemy number one. So, that's why when you read in the scripture, it says, Pharaoh, let my people go. And we are the same ones that saying it. Pharaoh, let my people go. And, it, it, man, it's just the levels that was taken, the strategy that they used to attach us mentally from the continent was delivery and it's astounding just when you look at it and, and how you see it it just talk to your brother and sister and then you see how they don't want to be from Africa you will see how well oh um yeah my people from India my people from China uh Oh, I can't be from Africa because I don't know what country I'm from. So, so, and so you understand where I'm coming from? You don't know what country you're from. So we saying that now we don't know the history of Africa. And we don't know that these countries were instituted, was established by European empires in 1900s. So now we just limit ourselves to these countries. And we don't know that before then, Africa was free flowing and people went everywhere. So it's important, man, it's important that we know the migration history of the continent. And all the migration history of this continent, it starts from the Great Lakes region, from the Nile Valley, the Nile Valley civilization, the ancient Nile Valley civilization. All the African could trace their lineage to that Nile Valley area. So we have to be focused. We have to always be moving strategically, calculated when we approaching the problem, identifying the problem, and not getting caught in the headlights not getting caught playing the race card. So that's why when you see, first thing they'll tell you is that, you know, when you see these civil rights leaders out there, you hear these Europeans like, oh, they just playing the race card. They just playing the race card. Hey, basically that's what they are because we talking about a superficial thing as in race. You know, it is bigger than race. This is ethnicity. We are a people. We are bigger than a superficial um, uh, uh, appearance in a way because what we are is deep inherent within us. When we say we have soul, basically we're saying we are Africans. When you see someone, oh, that's a soul brother. You know that's an African. Do you understand that when we walk around, when we call ourselves, or when one of the European call you a brother, what that mean? Hmm? I mean, you from Africa. They call you a sister. What that mean? You from Africa. When I tell you I went to Nigeria, and just like how we use brother, 
sister, they use it the same way, but they use it deeper. You know, you could be talking to someone, man, oh yeah, that's my brother, that's my brother. And then you'll be asking, man, that's your real brother? My wife, she, she asks him all the time, um, is that your brother, for real? But that's how it is. You know, that's how it is. Everybody, yeah, yeah, mother, everybody, papa, father. That's something that came over from Africa. Where do you think this came from? So we have to push that agenda. When we talking about the institutions that's against us, they are Afrophobic. And, and, and you know what, when I think about it, the sad part is that we're not catching on. Maybe 50 years down the line, maybe 60 years down the line, we will see it, we will understand it, we will get caught out of that immature mindset, it, the hate, uh, how I call, the hate you give, uh, the hate you give little ones, F everyone that thought life, so maybe you know, the hate they give the little ones, you know, turn us into emotional infants. So maybe one day we can get out of that emotional infancy and start moving with maturity and see what's going on and stop coming up with everything that can hold us back and do what it takes. But that will only happen once we start identifying the real problem, articulating it, and not necessarily get out our emotions, but let them flow through us maturely and properly. So I tell you, man, that racist shit, that shit out the door. And you know, these people, they Afrophobic. They just dislike Africa. Because they want the resources. They want everything in it. So, with that being said, you black. You black. You was cursed by him. Your color like that. That's all you are. You black. You know, uh, Africa not yours no more. You know? Nah. You was on here to serve. So when we start identifying where we're from and who we are and then start walking around with that dignity and pride and start showing off, chest out, you know, natural health flowing, that's how we're going to make change. So, um, yeah, man, that's what it's about. You know, a, a, a lot of times we going up against an Afrophobic system that just going up against, you know, just dislike Africa. You know, if you just look at the continent and you will see. And, but, hey, it's not over with. And it's, we moving and we got to keep moving forward. But we just have to understand what's going on and being able to identify problems and be able to have that bond to who we are. So then, when we see one another, we know how to identify each other. So now if I see a brother that comes from Cuba that looks like me, you know, I won't say, oh, he's not black. That shit confusing as hell. Nah, that's an African brother from Cuba. That's an African sister. Even from the continent, we have to identify each other. Man, I had went up to the university one time, and we was having an understanding about about, um, you know, Africans and African-Americans. And I was an Igbo brother that stood up and said that, man, African-Americans are not Africans. We are black. We can't be Africans. So, so that just to let you understand, man, the brainwashing is going on constantly and it's everywhere. And the education system is the main disher of it, is the main one that's throwing it out. So we have to be careful and we have to guard our intellect and we have to understand what's going on, why it's going on. You know, we got Congo, one of, is the 
richest land on this planet. And guess what? The Europeans, the UN over there doing what the hell they want. Because guess what? You just got black people everywhere. You don't got no Africans saying that that's their shit. You don't got Africans rising up across the globe saying, hey man, listen, we are Africans. You understand? Now we got Nigerians. Now we have Kenyans. Now we have uh, Ethiopians. We don't have no Africans no more standing up for each other. And that's just it. And so a lot of times this Afrophobia that come up against us, we don't recognize it. Only thing we recognize is racism and prejudice. But racism and prejudice is built on a coloring box. And it had no power. Racism and prejudice is a, a gimmick to keep you from not identifying the real problem. They don't hate you because you are got more melanin than them. Nah. They want to use you because you're more physical. You're more physical enduring than them. They want to use you because they think that they can manipulate you mentally because you don't know where you're from. And you're not willing to die for what you want. They want to use you because they want to get to your resources in your land. And they want to use you because you so willfully let them use you. They don't want to use you because of melanin in your skin. Nah. You just happen to have melanin in your skin. They want to use you because you are African. And they know that you is valuable. I say. Till next time, I say, Odumare.